Hey guys, Main Machinist here again. I'm in here tonight working on the motor here from my pipe frame VW base buggy. And uh, it's a homemade side-by-side off-road machine. Um, this is a, a 1600cc single port Volkswagen motor. And it's got a four to one MP collector exhaust system on here, which is really great. It has some good ground clearance. It's got some definite uh, pros to this. But one of the big cons is it doesn't have any heat riser uh, set up for the center mounted carburetor and the carburetor can ice up. So we're gonna fabricate a system here on this motor to heat the heat risers, uh, basing off what Volkswagen originally engineered in their mufflers. And we're gonna add that kind of a system onto this four in one collector and solve my problem. So here's what we're dealing with. If you look here, this is the one side of the heat riser tube on the intake manifold of an air-cooled Volkswagen engine. The other side of that pipe comes right here. And that pipe is connected to the intake manifold in order to bring heat to the intake manifold for the center mounted carburetor. I've done a whole video on how to clean these heat riser pipes out if yours are clogged. So get on that video. The link to that will be in the description of this video and it shows you the best ways to clean those out. But the problem is, even if I have good heat risers that are clear on this thing, the exhaust system from Empy does not have a way to mount uh, any kind of a flange here to the heat riser. So what I've done is I have cut a flange off of a junk factory Volkswagen exhaust and we're gonna mount that here in replace of in replacing this one we're going to cut the pipe we we'll put the pipe in here we're going to tig weld that then we'll have the flange here for the heat riser on this side on the other side there's a longer pipe that i have which you'll see as the video goes on that connects here and it will come forward further into this pipe and i'm going to drill this pipe out connect the heat riser pipe into it and then take that in now the reason why there's a longer one on this side than on the other side is as the exhaust flows out of the head here and passes the longer pipe inside, it creates a vacuum as the air is traveling around the curve here. And the vacuum pulls the heat from the other side through the pipe, underneath the intake, and around to here where it recirculates and recirculates that vacuum of heat so that the carburetor stays warm all the time. If you don't have it, you get a lot of hesitation in your motor. Uh, you get some rough idling and other problems that are caused by that. Just about every Volkswagen air-cooled engine out there, if it has not had the heat risers gone over, is gonna have this problem. This is not a road car. This is, like I said, a homemade side-by-side -side pipe frame buggy. But I still need the heat riser hooked up for optimum performance. So let's take a look at the original Volkswagen-style muffler and you'll see what I just told you illustrated in their design. Okay, what you're looking at here is a factory Volkswagen exhaust. It's a typical exhaust you'd find on a, a Beetle, Carmen Ghia, early bus. This is the flange that goes to the heat riser on the passenger side of the car. This is the flange that goes to the heat riser on the driver's side of the car. These here are for the fresh air heater hoses to come in, blows the heat down in, through the heat exchangers that would go on the back side here. So, this here mounts to the cylinder head on the passenger side of the vehicle. This on the top is the heat riser pipe. Before I showed you the piece that I'd cut off of a no good muffler, you can see now that that piece is this piece. So we're gonna use this original Volkswagen factory muffler as a template to design a heat riser system on the MP exhaust. On the driver's side, you have the flange for the cylinder head. And on the top side here, you have your heat riser flange. Notice the long tube, it comes down, wraps underneath, comes back through this side and into the muffler. That's what I was talking about, how you have one pipe that's longer than the other side. So when the heat, uh, the exhaust flows by that pipe, it draws the air through this pipe like a vacuum and has a recirculating heat effect that attaches to the heat risers. Here's another four to one typical buggy exhaust. 
This one you'll notice does have heat riser connections, but you notice they're both at the same spot, right where the outlet is from the head. So this isn't gonna work either because this doesn't have one mounted uh, forward with a longer pipe to create the vacuum draft through. So if you've got one of these style buggy exhausts or another one, even if it has heat riser hookups, you gotta make sure guys that they do it the German way. Okay, now this MP exhaust might not be the exact same one that you have. I will put the part number to this one in the video description, but they're going to be similar. Any of these collector header systems are similar. Uh, I'm gonna show you the whole process as I take this one apart and fabricate the heat riser flanges, but you might have to modify it a little bit depending on what exhaust you have. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the four springs here that hold pressure down from the top part of the four in one collector to the pipes themselves. And it's coming off pretty easy. Let's take the top off. Now the collector portion of the exhaust has been removed and we have the four pipes here. You can see there is where I'm going to mount the heat riser flange from the original Volkswagen muffler. After we cut this pipe right about there, we're gonna measure that and we're gonna cut it right. We're gonna take it together. The cool thing about doing this is I can work on one pipe at a time. Of course, I only need to work on two of the pipes, but I'm gonna be able to remove the, uh, well, it should have nuts here with studs, but the studs were broken off, so this actually has bolts that go into the head. We're gonna remove the, the fasteners. We're gonna take that pipe off, work on this pipe. Then when we've completed that side of the heat riser, we're gonna go over to this side we're gonna reinstall the first pipe. We're gonna take this pipe off, measure, cut, TIG weld, and reassemble it. Okay, I'm set up here with the number two cylinder pipe. This would be the passenger side, rear of the car pipe, the one with the short flange for the heat riser. Um, I'm gonna show you here what I'm gonna use to set up to know where to make my cut. You might have a different idea. You might have a better idea. Share with me any ideas you have in the comments. So basically what we have to do is this is sitting exactly as it was connected to the rear of the engine. See the pipes facing to, uh, upwards where the collector part is and this is uh, where the would connect the engine. So I've got the piece that I took off a VW muffler and what I need to do is have the heat riser part. The flange has to go on like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the two welding magnets to hold the flange where the flange is basically tipped a little bit so that it's um, square to the table. And then I'm gonna put this uh, new flange piece from the old muffler on top. The welding magnets will hold it there so that I can get a good uh, accurate way with the square to mark a line with my uh, Sharpie. So I'll show you how I'm going to set this up from the side view so you can see it in um, detail now that I've explained it. Alright, so we're set up from the side view. I'm going to take a couple of these welding magnets. And what I'm looking for here, I mean, this is not going to be perfectly square, 90 degrees, but I'm going to try to split the difference a little bit. Something like that. It's not perfect, but this isn't really made to be perfectly 90 degrees either. So we got this set here. Now I'm going to put the flange on top, which the magnets are going to hold the new flange where the old flange would be. Looking at it this way, I can, I've got it basically lined up pretty near. Then I'm gonna use a square. Now again, the square is just to give me an idea. This surface here that was cut was not cut uh, perfectly. So the square, you see it's got some play. Okay, I'm just gonna split the difference in there about, say, like this, and I'm gonna mark the pipe. Now, I don't want the pipe to be cut here because then it would just be touching the face of this. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take all this stuff off 
and I'm going to make another line in here. I'm going to say maybe an eighth of an inch or maybe a little bit longer than that so that the pipe can go inside this ID of the new flange and then we can weld it. Now as I measure how much extra I want to put on the pipe that we just marked, I have to remember that I'm limited as to how much pipe I can have extended into the ID here because if you look in here, there's your heat riser flange. The hole, I don't want to put the pipe in there so far that it blocks the hole off and then we're not getting a draft in through the heat riser as the vacuum does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to just take a steel rule and measure basically from here into here. Get that measurement and that's how much I'm going to extend the pipe in. I'm not afraid to go past it a little bit in there, but I don't want to block it off halfway with the new pipe. So my gut instinct was pretty good on this. I said I was going to go about an eighth of an inch. I'm actually going to go just a hair over that and go five thirty seconds of an inch. Okay, I've got the pipe set up in a vise. My mark is here. You can't really see it that good on the camera, but my mark's going to be here. What I'm going to use to cut this off is a <clears throat> air cutoff wheel. Okay, the pipe has been cut, but the pipe is the same diameter as the flange pipe was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Dremel and I'm going to open up the inside of this ID with the Dremel and then I'm also going to go around a little bit around this pipe to reduce the OD of this so that it'll have a good fitment. So instead of using the Dremel on the ID of the flange, I decided just to throw it in my lathe. It was a lot faster to open up that ID. Okay, I now have my pipe in place. Now what I've done is I basically put the exhaust system back on without anything being welded yet just to make sure that it's all going to line up. I have the collector with the four pipes in it. And over here, you can see I did the work to make the original pipe fit inside the original Volkswagen flange. I'm now going to take my TIG welder and I'm just going to tack weld this here to hold it in place because I know it's all lined up. Once it's tack welded on, I'm going to remove the pipe again, get it to my workbench and then finish the welding process. I have the pipe tacked and I'm now going to complete the weld around this pipe. The pipe on the pasture side is completed. It's all welded around. Now the task is to fabricate this side of the pipe, which has to be the long side to get the vacuum flowing through. And what I have here is the other side of the Volkswagen factory pipe that went to the muffler. I've started the bending process on this. I've got it pretty close to where I want it now. You see when it mounts up there to the flange, uh, it's going to be, this is my goal, is to put it in the pipe right about here. I'm going to continue to bend this pipe. I just need to bend this part down a little bit so that it can enter kind of at a 90 degree right in there. Actually, it would be even better if I could put it a little bit at an angle. And what I'm going to do is on this, on, when I cut this pipe, once I cut it to the length, we're going to, I'm going to show you how we're going to open up one side of the pipe so that on the inside as it sticks in like this it's going to be cut out on one side so that as the air of the exhaust flows through it has an action to go around the pipe and pull the air out of the small pipe to create that vacuum effect that we want to get the heat risers all the way through okay i'm set up where i want to be with my pipe it has been bent to the proper angle i'm starting to drill out this here to about 750 thousandths then I'm going to use a Dremel to fine tune that hole so I don't have to weld that much between the VW pipe and this pipe. Okay, you can see I've got the pipe fitted now. I have the uh, I have it secured to the heat riser, so that's going to be in the right location. 
what I did to get the pipe exactly the way I wanted it, you can see there's some bend marks here. I used a combination of my Arbor Press and the uh, oxyacetylene torch to heat and make some bends in it. And then sometimes if I thought it pinched too much, I would take a set of pliers and just kind of pinch the flattened part out so it kind of made it back into a more of a round shape on the inside. And it is getting good airflow through it. Things you want to watch for here. Obviously, you don't want this pipe going so far in there that it's going to cause a back pressure issue off of this cylinder. But at the same time, you need enough sticking in there that, you know, it's going to draw the vacuum um, as the exhaust flows by. So if you could look at an imaginary line inside of this pipe, it probably extends to about here on the back side of this pipe, or actually it would be the front side facing the car. And the rear side just barely extends beyond the slip. So what it does, it makes like a little hood inside of there. If you can imagine like this imaginary line. So that as the exhaust flows by, it flows, it hits the obstruction, flows around it to the low side. And the action of the air flowing around the high side to the low side and around the curve of the pipe, that's what's causing the vacuum to pull the hot air from the other side of the motor through the heat riser pipe, back down through here and through this side. All right, my project is complete. I've got the exhaust totally reassembled on the motor just to make sure everything lined up and fit for the last time. Heat riser is connected there on the pasture side. Heat riser is connected on the driver's side. Everything's welded up. There are no leaks. I checked uh, for leaks where I welded it with a light. No air getting through. Looks like the wells came out pretty good. Some of them aren't the prettiest wells, but they did uh, hold well. Now, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. You should fabricate something similar to this on your buggy or Baja or uh, whatever you've got for a vehicle that has an aftermarket exhaust. And next job I'm going to have, like I said before, is I got to strip this motor down to change the intake manifold to one that's clear. I'm not going to show you that on this video. Look for a future video for that. And make sure, again, that you go back and check out my clearing the heat risers video. It has a complete guide on how to do that. Thanks again, guys. This is May Machinist signing off. Hope you enjoy it.